July and August could not get here fast enough for old school X-Men fans that maybe still have some hope for the future of X-Men and comic books. We got the big reboot from the ashes and all that kind of stuff. I know a lot of you are wondering, Wes, is that Green Lantern shirt as old as it looks? If it looks like it's about a decade old, then yes, it does. It's like this shirt is like 10 years old. And my wife like insists that I throw it away because she says it's too old now and there's a couple holes in it. And I, I do not get it. This is a perfectly worn in a Green Lantern shirt, and I love it. And I'm not throwing it away. It doesn't matter what my wife says, unless she, you know, ultimately demands it. Then I guess I would have to do it. But I have no plans on giving in until I have no other choice. Does anybody else have to do that stuff? It, it makes no sense to me. This shirt fits perfect because I've worn it about a thousand times at this point. But we're actually here to talk about the X Men and the X Men couple books. We got some teasers out talking about X-Force, Phoenix, as well as NYX. New teasers show the logos for X-Force, Phoenix, and NYX, and hit it more information being revealed about each of these titles later in the week. The X-Force teaser states the world is broken and Forge knows how to fix it. His secret weapon is X-Force. The Phoenix teaser reads, Life, Power, Possibility, One Woman, Alone in the Cosmos, Jean Grey is Phoenix. Finally, the pitch for NYX is Five Mutants, Alone in the Big City, Welcome back to the real world. Welcome to NYX. We have some important information or interesting information there. We know we're going to get more information as the week goes along. And I will have a follow-up video on this because we do have details on one of these titles, but not the other two for the most part. We do know that Forge is going to be in a starring role in X-Force, which I think, you know, it is an interesting gamble on their part. Forge, not exactly an A-lister or really a B-lister, or even a C-lister. I don't think Forge could carry his own solo title. We'll see if he can actually carry a team book. A lot of people had speculated that maybe Rachel Summers would be the Phoenix because she was going to have a book with um, with Betsy Braddock, and she had been the Phoenix in the past, although Echo is technically the Phoenix now, I believe. But that is actually going to be Jean Grey. That makes all the sense in the world. I don't know why anyone thought a solo Phoenix book would be anyone but Jean Grey, the idea of her being alone in the cosmos, like on a solo title, doesn't sound intriguing. I think Jean Grey works really well as a member of the X-Men or the X-Men universe. I personally don't think that Jean Grey can really carry a solo title for any length of time or notable length of time, even as the Phoenix. And quite frankly, I find Jean Grey far less interesting as Phoenix at this point. We've kind of gone to this well so many times that it's gotten a little bit stale but I'm not surprised that's where they're going on that one. And then the other one, the NYX teaser, I think is interesting because it doesn't scream X-Men to me. It doesn't even really scream New Mutants or Gen X or anything like that. It makes me think it's like a reality show with five young mutants, like the real world. That's what it makes me think that they're going for there, which um, I don't think will be a winning formula for a superhero comic book. But, of course, we don't have those details. That's my speculation regarding the teasers and the information that we did have. We did get a lot more information for one of the titles. That would be X-Force. The creative team behind X-Force is writer Jeff Thorne and artist Marcus Toe. This time, the mutant Black Ops team will revolve around mutant builder Forge, who will access an Omega-level degree of his mutant power to invent anything to bear witness to everything broken in the world. If that sounds like a lofty goal, Marvel is pitching the series concept as Forge leading a team to fix everything that's been destroyed in the fall of Krakoa. As for who's on the team, the regular cast includes Forge, Rachel Summers, Betsy Braddock, Sage, Surge, and an apparent newcomer named Tank, along with a revolving door of A-list guest stars, starting with Deadpool. That's probably a good strategy if you're actually going to have Forge lead the team to have A-list stars in there to kind of prop up interest. You know, you want Deadpool on that cover, you want Wolverine, and maybe some of the other really cool characters out there, maybe a cable, something like that, that all really makes sense on an X-Force team. This doesn't really sound much like X-Force or what you would expect for X-Force. You know, X-Force are, you know, the Black Ops team. They're the ones out there doing the wet works and, you know, surveillance and taking down people without everyone knowing kind of thing and doing the dirty work that the X-Men team uh, probably doesn't want to attach their name or something like that. This doesn't sound like that. It sounds like an attempt to build up Forge. And I think Forge is actually really, really cool. And he's been vastly underutilized for a very long time. Of course, he was prominent on X-Force during the Ben Percy run during the Krokoan era. 
but I don't think they really used him well. He was mostly just a deus ex machina that could make anything out of Krakoan technology or whatever. You know, what are they going to be fixing? Are they going to be fixing all the stuff that Orcus broke? Are they going to go out there and, and fix that kind of stuff? Or are they actually going to go out there and fix the stuff that Krakoa broke? Because... You know, I don't really care about Orcus as an X-Men fan. I care about the X-Men. I care about the mutant superheroes within the Marvel Comics universe. And they weren't very heroic, basically from the very get-go during the Krakoan era. They were basically leveraging you know, life-saving drugs against the world to win their sovereignty and holding it over people to kind of blackmail them. And they were starting their own black market drug, drug trade. And they were going out there and stealing state secrets using their telepaths and all kinds of stuff. Like a lot of the stuff the X-Men did during the Krakoan era was pretty gross. Now, if they're out, not only fixing the stuff that Orcus broke, but also fixing the stuff that the Krakoan era broke, like maybe the relationships between people and mutants, that would be kind of smart, but not for X-Force, I don't think. But it kind of sounds like that's where they're going there. Jeff Thorne is a really odd choice to me. The last time he did anything of significance was really his Green Lantern run. Uh, you know, I, I got to admit, he tried real hard to elevate John Stewart as Green Lantern. And by doing that, he decided that he needed to become like a cosmic entity or cosmic level god. Because apparently being John Stewart Green Lantern wasn't good enough. And he kind of broke a bunch of stuff in the process, and he never really elevated Jon Stewart at all. In fact, once we got up to, was it Dark Crisis on Infinite Earths, I think the second hero that they kill is the cosmic god whatever thing that Jon Stewart was, because I think DC Comics also at the time realized that that did not work. So if he has to go to those lengths to try to build up Forge, rather than concentrating on what makes Forge awesome and showing you how dope he is, you know, rather than just putting layers and layers of other stuff and new powers and all this kind of stuff to make him more powerful, that's not going to work. That's not really how you elevate a character. That's how you make an interesting story arc with some cool covers on it. But that's not going to sell for Forge. If, if you want to elevate the character, you got to elevate the character by concentrating on who he is and demonstrating why he's awesome not throwing new shit on top of him. That stuff's not going to work. That is certainly a temptation with Forge because he can essentially kind of build anything. So we'll we'll see what happens with that one. I like Marcus Toe as an artist. You've got the Betsy Braddock, Rachel Summers relationship stuff in there that was basically the downfall. Well, Teeny Howard was the downfall of Teeny Howard, but it certainly didn't help throwing that stuff in there and it really turned a lot of people off and they couldn't get past like five issues on two ongoing series once they did that stuff. So X-Force is admittedly, historically, a, a good series that sells well and can sell in the name X-Force alone. But I do see this particular idea and concept working against that and them having to overcome a lot of obstacles along the way, the makeup of the team and what it sounds like they're actually trying to do. It was never an entirely sure thing that Jean Grey would be the lead in the new Phoenix title spinning out of the Marvel's X-Men from the Ashes relaunch, even though Rachel was getting another separate book with Betsy Braddock, there are always pretenders to the throne, and Echo was host for some time recently, but a series of logos and details for the three new X-Men comics confirm that Jean Grey is Phoenix, Forge is involved with X-Force, and NYX is indeed set in New York City. Previous rumors suggest Stephanie Phelps is writing Phoenix, and Alex Pacnadel is writing NYX, but those rumors also stated Declan Shelby is writing X-Force, uh, which is not true. So hopefully we go on trend here and we don't go with the rumors and Stephanie Phillips isn't on, you know, this uh, Phoenix book, which honestly I don't think can carry an ongoing title as is. If you throw Stephanie Phillips on it, you know, it might not get to six issues. It's kind of the, what is going on there. I don't think NYX, if you freaking put Scott Snyder on the title, would get past five issues. It doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, interesting details to it or, or the concept itself when it was originally introduced like 20 years ago 25 years ago maybe at this point just wasn't good to begin with and try to revamp a stupid idea probably means you're just stuck with a stupid idea but there were a lot of rumors out there hopefully the rumor i really want not to be true is Saladin Ahmed riding wolverine with um, greg capullo on art we know greg capullo is going to be the artist there but we are proving that some of these rumors, or even a lot of these rumors, are not, in fact, true. I haven't heard the Stephanie Phillips name. I have heard Chris Cantwell's name along with a couple of other people, but I don't know what they're actually going to be writing. But, you know, those are some. that's just some of the other information I have with those titles. Now, we do have some information that I think is actually cool and I think is a smart move 
whether or not it moves people or gets them really excited. Avengers number 12, written by Jed McKay, sneakily introduced the X-Men's new base ahead of the X-Men's relaunch later this year. In the issue, the Avengers finally take action against the anti-mutant group Orcus, destroying a Sentinel factory in Alaska in the process. As confirmed by future X-Men editor Tom Brevoort in his recent newsletter, this base will serve as the X-Men's headquarters when current Avengers writer Jed McKay relaunches adjectiveless X-Men alongside artist Ryan Stegman in July. I don't think this is particularly important or key or anything like that. I don't have the words other that are that important to lay on this kind of piece of connective tissue. But I do think connective tissue is important in comic books that you can introduce ideas or concepts where they don't seem important or maybe trivial or, oh, that was just a set piece. And then later on, you kind of build on that. So I more fleshed out, fully uh, conceptualized, realized universe in the process. Jed McKay likes to cross over basically all the stuff that he does. In fact, you know, recently in Doctor Strange, we had two issues where basically all of his characters got together and played Dungeons and Dragons. Unfortunately, and I like the concept of heroes being in Dungeons and Dragons. You know, I like the series die, at least for six issues. Unfortunately, his version of that story did not really pan out and wasn't very good, at least in this humble reviewer's opinion. But I do like the thinking ahead. I don't know why, you know, <laughs> I don't know why Cyclops would want to put an X-Men base, you know, in the Sentinel factory in Alaska. You know, is that really going to be someplace that's quiet? I imagine that they have Sentinel building technology. There's going to be some government officials and oversight on that facility until it's taken down. But it is comic book, so you don't want to overthink it too much. But there you go. We have what could be an important set piece introduced in Avengers number 12 that's going to play out in Jed McKay's new X-Men book. Does it get me more excited about it? But I do like the idea of connective tissue. Sometimes those can be the coolest moments in comic books that people won't even recognize them when they go right over their head. But you're like, whoa, I was thinking about this, you know, a couple months ago. You know, I hadn't seen that in, in this long, and now it's finally there again. That's really cool. You know, the, the one example that jumps in my mind, I know a lot of you don't read Valiant comics very often, but there's this awesome character called Ninja K., and he's able to kind of prolong his life. And they did this event called the Book of Death. And in the Book of Death, we basically saw like the deaths of the four strongest characters in the Valiant universe well off into the future. And as Ninja K is running down a uh, live wire, his girlfriend or whatever, he's trying to catch up to her before she becomes se sentient on like a an enormous ship. He doesn't make it and he drives his sword into the ground is like his last dying act. And you're like, oh, okay, that's an interesting way of, of taking out the character. You know, that's his final moment. But then when you read 4001 AD a few years later, you have the character Rai, who's on that basically spaceship that's become a satellite that's going around the Earth called New Japan, where you have this character. He's almost like Big Brother, but he's called Father. And he banishes Rai off the satellite down to Earth, where most people can't even live or function anymore. And he needs to go back up and challenge father, but he doesn't have a weapon. And he discovers this tree. It's the only beautiful thing left on earth. And at the base of this tree is the sword that Ninja K thrust into the ground. And that's the sword that, that Rai takes back up and frees everybody. That is awesome connective tissue. That gets me really excited about comic books. And it's one of the coolest payoffs I've ever read in a comic book. And I don't even know that Matt Kent thought it was important. But as a reader, it was super important to me. So I don't think this will be that kind of level of cool stuff. But that's where a connective tissue could be really cool. It could get you into a story and you can get payoffs that you never even know that you wanted. So hopefully they do more of this stuff and make the Marvel 616 comic book universe just a little bit more closely knit to tie things in together that not everybody or everything is happening separately at all at the same time and nothing affects each other. You know what I mean? I think that's a good idea. Hopefully this is just a lesser version of something much better that they're going to do in the future. So those are the details that we do have on X-Force, NYX, and Phoenix at this moment. We should have more details throughout the week. I'll probably have another follow-up video maybe on Sunday. We'll see how it goes. I do want to say thank you all very much for catching up on the latest X-Men details. I hope you're still excited for the relaunch. Maybe you aren't cynical like I am. And hopefully we're getting bigger and better things. But the more details I get, the more I kind of realize this probably isn't going to work out in the end. But if you would like more coverage of comic books and all that kind of stuff, 
you need to go check out the Thinking Critical Patreon. There's a link in the video description. Lots of podcasts and lots of bigger discussions about comic books, comic book movies, comic book entertainment, all that kind of stuff being had there. 32 hours of new podcasts every single month on the Patreon.